Welcome to Triangle B and I. Today's show is brought to you by Simply Done Concierge. Folks, we talk all week. There is no way to create more hours, but with Simply Done Concierge in the team, you can be in two places at one time. You may need to be at work or somewhere else. We can come in, do some meal prep, do some unpacking, pet sitting services, all kinds of things that can help you be in two places at once. So if you go to simplydoneconcierge.com, uh, let us know how we can help you. I know we'll be able to make you more productive during your day. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Manning. Each week on Triangle BNI, we bring you a local small business success story. If you are not familiar with BNI, it is Business Networking International, the world's largest networking or organization. Our little slice of heaven here in the Triangle, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, and the surrounding towns. Uh, 32 chapters meet every week, and our goal is to help each other grow our businesses. And our uh, local small business success story this week is Neil Henry with Farm Bureau Insurance. He, uh, his group, Carpex, is a core group. So they are trying to become a full-fledged uh, BNI chapter, which they will, no doubt. They meet Wednesday mornings at 8.30 at the Keller Williams Legacy Office in Apex. Uh, good morning, Neil. How are you? Good morning, Mike. Doing good. Coffee's in, so we're good to go. There you go, man. Uh, how many cups <laughs> each morning do you need? Oof, um, probably two All right. in the morning. Now, and then a couple in the afternoon. There you go. See, I like that too. I'm a I'm late to the coffee club. I didn't get in till about my my mid forties. My wife's family, huge coffee drinkers. I watch them all the time. Tried it one time. I find out yep. if I put the right creamer in there, I'm good to go. But <laughs> excuse me, I'm a decaf <laughs> guy. So when I go to Starbucks, yep. I always disappoint them. But yep. I kind of like the iced coffee. The more I drink it, the more I kind of like the iced coffee. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, coffee tastes terrible, so you have to put <laughs> creamer in it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, when I go to Starbucks, I can't figure out what, you know, like the venti or whatever yeah. it is. I just tell them small, medium, or large. That's what so, I do. I, <laughs> or extra large if they have it. I think yeah. that's grande or close to it, yeah. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I drink my sweet tea in a grande cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I usually go place, biggest one you got. Yeah. Yeah. I just walk in and do this. Yeah. One of That's those, right. Uh, but yeah, so I was late to the call. It's, it's good. I like it in the morning, but uh, sometimes what I'll do when, uh, when my wife leaves for work, I'll turn a coffee pot off, let it cool down a little bit and I'll just put it in the fridge and later on in the afternoon, I'll have some iced coffee. So I kind of like I've that. Ne I've never tried that. So <laughs> yeah, I might have to jump on that train one day. There you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> all right. So insurance agents, we know you have such an easy life. People call you all the time. They're buying Teslas or buying million dollar policies, right? Uh, can I assume that, and you've been doing this for about three and a half years now. Can I assume that probably in seventh grade at the career fair, your first set or second choice was not an insurance agent at the time? Uh, yes, sir. You can assume correctly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> so we'll get to how you got there, but I, um, yeah. I've heard, I think you've said it. I've heard other agents say it, that most everybody has a policy, but not everybody has correct coverage. Correct. And, yes, sir. And you have one of those jobs where most of us go, I got something. I don't know what I have, but I got what I'm supposed to have. And man, we mm -hmm. need way more sometimes we're supposed to have. I know you get those calls, right? Oh yeah. All the time. All the time. Then I try to try to inform the the customer of what they have. Um, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, oversell or undersell. I just want to make sure that they're covered and something were to happen. Yeah, because a lot of that has to do, it's not just a, a car is a car. I mean, my I right. drive a 2004 Toyota Camry. I think it's a Camry and my wife just bought a, a new Kia Sorento. So those are mm -hmm. going to be different, but our kids are gone. When we had kids, right. our insurance coverage probably should have been a little different, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's now, correct. Yes, sir. Do people call you? Do they ever get to the point of, Hey, here's what I got. Or do you have to ask them what's going on in life? What do you real, what's important to you? No, a little bit of both. So it's, it's, it's more so of, you know, hey, here's what I got, you know, 
some of the time they ask, do you have any suggestions that, you know, what would you do if you're in this situation? Um, um, you know, am I covered correctly? You know, but and I always speak about, especially homeowners insurance and total loss. Yeah. So if a total loss were to happen, we want to make sure that you can build back what you have and not, you know, not anything worse. And that conversation is a subtle difference, but it's subtle like the size of the Grand Canyon, because mm-hmm. there's two ways of saying that, and one way, and I forget what the phrase is, but one of those ways is not total rebuild. Correct. Correct. Yes, sir. And yes, so, sir. and people think, well, I, they told me this is all I need and that's not the case, right? They need, they need to ask a couple more questions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I make sure that, so in dealing with homeowners insurance, I make sure that I have the correct square footage. We have a program, it's called an RCE, it's a residential cost of later i don't make up these numbers off the top of my head so we put the, <laughs> we put the square footage in there ask the customer you know do you have anything customized you know uh the, from floors to you know countertops uh then we make sure that they're covered from anywhere from you know 170 dollars to 200 dollars square foot um you know to rebuild their home should we look at certain valuables in the house jewelry uh, you know, I guess any paintings that you may have and ensure yep. those in, a, in, a, in not in another policy. I don't think that's the right word, but should we put extra insurance on those? Yes, sir. So there's a limit on everything. There's a limit on jewelry. There's a limit on firearms. There's a limit on money. Um, so jewelry has, you know, a, a specific limit and you can list those out. Um, so if you think about it from an insurance standpoint, if you have a total loss in your house and, um, you know, you you tell me after the fact, well, I had a $20,000 ring. Well, we don't know that. Yeah. You know, we can't just assume that, you know, it, 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 that you had a $20,000 ring, that you had a $10,000 watch, that you had, you know, a $20,000 painting. So you got to list those just to make sure. Uh, that everything's covered in the case of a total loss. And I heard one day that it's probably a good idea every now and then to walk through your house with a video camera, now your cell yeah. phone. Yeah. And just yeah, kind of, right. Yeah. Should, would you recommend people mm-hmm. do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be every day and you don't, you don't have to list everything, but uh, yeah, it, it would definitely help because if you're, if you have a total, Cost, you're going to get a check from an insurance come from an insurance fee for personal property, and it's just going to be a big check, and you're going to have to figure out, okay, well, I need to start from scratch. Okay, what did I have in my cabinets? What did I have in, you know, my laundry room? What did I have in my bedroom? What did I have in, you know, this room or that room? So, uh, yeah, it, it never hurts to at least do that, you know, once, you know, every three or four years, and if you buy something um, like. I think my dad, uh, they bought some new knives. My dad couldn't understand why they needed more knives, but my mom bought knives the other day. So, you know, hey, we need to put that to make sure in case of a total loss uh, that we can, you know, rebuild, or we can have those things again. Yeah. And the uh, the mementos, though, when your two-year-old drew something, and uh, those are the things that really should put prices on because you can't redo right, that right. when they're 15. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know that the insurance world is there yet, right? No, sir. No, sir. We're not there yet. Uh, anything that, uh, yeah, you have a uh, child draw, I would put it in a safe. So uh, yeah. <laughs> that's very valuable. You know, yeah. fire resistant safe. Good point. Uh, learned something the other day. There's a gentleman that joined a BN, another BNI chapter in the pet insurance seat. Ooh. Didn't All know. Right. I, I know the pet world is big, <laughs> but I did not know. I guess yeah. you, I guess you can sell pet insurance, right? Yeah, I, I get. We don't sell pet insurance. That's the only we might do brokerage, but that's the only thing that um, Farm Bureau itself doesn't sell. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I guess if you want it, you can get it. So yeah, uh, yeah, because I get boats and cars and stuff like that. The, the pet <laughs> right. one is in, interesting. I didn't want to get into the dog versus cat conversation because I don't want to offend <laughs> anybody, but. I'm happy to offend people if you like, you know, the other kind, but yeah. I, I guess you could put a price on a pet, right? There's got to be an industry I, I, standard. I, I'm assuming so. Uh, 
<laughs> I don't think you'll, uh, you know, if it's a uh, a rare breed, I'm not sure yep. that you'll get that amount of money back. Yep. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'd have to, you know, ask somebody uh, that's above my pay grade yep. about pet yep. insurance. I was just surprised to hear that, but the guy really <laughs> wanted in B and I, and somebody else had the property and casualty seat like you have, and he thought, I'll take the pet insurance seat. Like, <laughs> All right, good for you, man. Uh, in your uh, short but very busy time. A, at Farm Bureau, B, just in the insurance world in general, what has surprised you most in a good way? Um, surprised me most in a good way. Um, oh, boy. Mike, I know you prepped me for a question, but not, yeah. not, not this hard. Not this hard. Um, with, with Farm Bureau, it's more so of, but we just take care of people. You know, we just, that's, that's the biggest thing. And it's not, you know, it doesn't, we inform people what they have and we just want to make sure we take care of people. Like I said, you know, it, if, it, you know, if they have, if they don't have enough coverage, then we want to make sure that they do, because if they were to be in a situation where they, you know, would have paid $6 a month more for more coverage. Yep. You know, you just want to make sure that they're that they're covered um, and you want to throw out all the options whenever somebody switches over, whenever you're talking with especially car insurance with somebody. You might you want to make sure that they know, OK, if, you know, A, B and C happens that you'll be covered. But if D happens, you won't be covered. Um so yeah, th that. Um, but but Farm Bureau was just a personal relationship. I've had Farm Bureau my whole life. My dad worked with our life insurance company for thirty seven years. Uh, I've never known anything else, and I'll never switch to anything else because it's just the the way you communicate with your agent. It's 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 second to none, you know. Yeah, and I will tell folks if you've uh, if you've not heard from your agent at least every what six to nine months, Neil, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. need to call and yeah. find out why they're not talking to you. That's right. Auto uh, renews twice a year, and homes renew once a year. So yeah. that's at least three touches that yeah. we can, you know. I hear it, but it makes sense because things change, and we forget to mm -hmm. tell you what we've added or deleted, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that little you know bit can make a difference. So here's my public service announcement on auto insurance. <laughs> so I bought, what are we, 2023 now? This had to have been, golly, five years ago, maybe. It was before COVID. It was a couple of years before COVID. I bought a minivan, uh, which I'm, I've never been a car guy, so I don't look at, I, I think the Mustang's the, the coolest car ever, but I don't really care what I drive. And I like minivans because I can sit up high and I can carry a lot of stuff and a lot of people. <laughs> So I went and bought the car, bought the minivan and the guy at the dealership said, do you want gap insurance? I'm like, ah, I'm good. And about three and a half months later, man, I got T-bone. That car was totaled, cost me $2,400 out of pocket. Right. So people, if somebody says, do you want gap insurance? Say yes. It'll save you at least $2,300. Yes, 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 sir. And it would have cost any, it would have cost me what 60 bucks, maybe. Right. Right. So any, <laughs> yeah, like you're saying, any, you know, we get changes all the time. We do it the old school way where, you know, if a customer calls in to, Hey, I bought a new 2023 Tesla. If, I, if they haven't talked to me, we have four ladies up front that are outstanding. Uh, and they say, you know, the the changes in my box, you know, Mike Manning, you know, 2023 Tesla, and we have this coverage called RRC, which is repair repl replace, just like gap insurance. And you know, we we want to make sure that that is at least talked about. Mm -hmm. Hey, did you get gap insurance from them? Okay, well, we have this endorsement for, like you said, forty bucks every six months yeah. that we can add on there, so you're not upside down. Yeah. So, yeah. I was not happy when I found out that I made the wrong decision. Right. So. <laughs> right. All right. So before you got into insurance, you were a baseball coach and a recruiting yes, coordinator. Uh, I assume going back to the seventh grade uh, career fair, you were closer to being a baseball coach than an insurance agent, maybe? No, it was before seventh grade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was before seventh grade. It was. 
you know, five years old, I want to be a major league baseball player. Oh. Then, uh, yeah, I realized once I got to college, um, yeah, in high school, I was okay. Uh, I'm never going to tell you, you know, I was okay. Um, but you know, I started getting older and the players started getting better. I was like, I'm not as good as these players. So maybe, you know, college, we'll, we'll just stick with college. I still, so, I still contend, uh, we have my wife and I have two boys that both played, uh, or youngest one played T-ball. I still contend that's the greatest level of youth sports because you've got kids who have some kids have no idea what they're doing. The batting mm -hmm. helmet looks like it could go to their waist if it got past their shoulders. It's that big on them. And then right. the attention span in the field, Neil, is it doesn't even start, right, with some of the kids. No, They're sir. like, no, no, yeah. My uh, my little five-year-old is in T-ball right now. And speaking of the helmet, she runs, you know, around the bases <laughs> holding her, her helmet because it's – I thought it was the right size, but I guess not. So <laughs> we had when my, our youngest son Cameron was playing T ball, the uh, one game it was windy, and the second baseman was standing in the dirt, uh, taking his glove and dragging it on the ground to kick up dirt. And he would just watch it go up into the air with the winds. Billy, Billy, pay attention, right? And then we had an outfielder one time, and you know, everybody else is in the outfield, so you could have what four, five, six, seven, eight people right. in the outfield, right? So there was a ball hit to the fence, which doesn't happen often, but there's a good mm -hmm. legit ball hit to the fence. And he ran and put his glove on it and wouldn't let anybody else touch it. And the three runners on the other team just rounded the base. <laughs> he just put his glove hey, on the ball and right. step one. And yeah. we're like, yeah. oh, okay, fine. Yeah. It's like, yeah. but I, yeah, I step one is finding it. Yep. I love T ball because they wanted to slide into a base to get dirty. And then mm -hmm. what are the snacks after the game? That's right. That's right. Definitely a Capri Sun. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. A <laughs> even even <laughs> back in. Best juice ever invented. Yeah. So Cameron, this was nineteen ninety five, nineteen ninety six. So even back then, it was the it was the drink for snacks. At the oh yeah. The game. Yeah. Yeah. We should have uh, invested in Capri Sun. So, are you a coach yet of your daughter's team? So two years ago when she played, she was, what, three at the time? Three going to be four. Yeah, I coached then, um, but I coached long enough. I just sit on the side and video. It's, it's not good. She's only five. She doesn't understand video, but I just yep. sit over there and video her swimming. And I, really, and I really don't say anything either. Like, you know, you have those moms that are, you know, that are, that are yelling or those dads that are yelling, come on, hit the ball, run, do this, do that. And I just, I literally just sit back over there and just video and, yep. and just watch. Yeah. They'll come to you with questions. It's a young oh, with you. Yeah. They're, they're five. They're, we're yeah. not talking strategy yet. Right. <laughs> hey dad, how yeah. about, how about that hit and run? I pulled off like, no, yeah. no we're not there yet. So. Yeah. I'm sitting there with my, with my little five-year-old on, on the phone. I'm like, Hey, when you when you stride, make sure your hands are up, not low. You know you're low, so you're not. Hit. I'm like, yeah. she's five. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. And finally, just like breaking down video with my five year old. Yeah, yeah. Then you realize, like, just go have a good time. You know, go yeah. go and get dirty. Girl, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> go get dirty and everything. But I love. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm breaking it down, Mike. She's like, ooh, I like my batting gloves. I'm like, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> But I, I just, I love T-ball. And so that was 1995. So yeah. we're going on what, about 28 years? Still my yeah. favorite level of, of youth sports. Oh my God, that was so much fun. So, all right. So you played, do you coach some kids who are probably showing some skill sets in T-ball? You were right. an assistant coach and recruiting coordinator at North Carolina Central. Mm -hmm. So let's real quick go to the transition from the baseball world to insurance how did that mm -hmm. how did that come about yeah so like i said i've been a farm bureau guy my whole life um and then in 2019 the end of 2019 i was faced with an issue of keep coaching and never see my child or yeah. find something else so my dad has always told me and i get on to him now he's always told me he's like i think you'd be a good agent i think you'd be a good agent and you know Three years into this, I'm like, Dad, why didn't you tell me this before? <laughs> you know, <laughs> here I am being a recruiting coordinator at the Division One school, having to drive for Uber uh, on our off season because you know the 
uh, newsflash, uh, coaches don't make much money. Uh, so, um, so yeah, I did that. And, uh, the 2020, I was, I, I went and interviewed a couple spots and landed in Fuquay, um, walked in here. It was like, you know, the first place I walked into, it was okay, but they're, you know, the, the, the vibe wasn't great. Uh, and I walked in here, it's like walking into, I'm not going to say it's walking into Tennessee because that place is awful, but it's like walking into Alabama. Um, you know, like the University of Alabama football facility. I'm like, I'll take this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not giving any credit to Tennessee. Tennessee's like, it's like Ole Miss is right here, and then Tennessee's right. I, I'm yeah. good as long as you're not a Gator fan. I'm good with you. We'd end the interview right now. If you, well, if you're a Gator, you wouldn't be on here. So, uh, consider, yeah, consider yeah. yourself. I wish I was a Gator. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good with Ole Miss. I got no problem with Ole Miss. So, uh, yeah, I'm not. All right. So, so recruiting coordinator at a a level that uh North Carolina Central is on um mm -hmm. how did you guys find players at that level that wanted to play at this school at this level all that because recruiting's a bear even when you are the Alabamas and the Notre Dames and the USC's of the world yeah yeah I uh let's see it's, recruiting being a bear I think uh Kirby Smart said it's 80% uh, or 90% recruiting and 10% coaching. So if you want to be a better coach, get better players. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> at our level um, at North Carolina Central, you know, it's we. I think there's 18 Division One baseball teams in North Carolina. So um, we were usually number 17 or 18 on, on kids' choices. Um, a lot of our guys came from their senior year. Um, yeah, not having anywhere else to go. Um, let's see how many we have three guys in the minor leagues currently that were not signed until their senior year. Um, one's in triple A. Uh, one was drafted in the 10th round by the Rays, and the other one, uh, I think he signed a free agent deal two years ago, and he's in double A with the Giants. Hey, that's pretty um, cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's very cool. To be, you know, the, to follow those kids, but recruiting in North Carolina Central, you know, you kind of learn every year of what you need to do. After the first couple of years, you know, I flew out to Texas to a junior college tournament. Yeah, were there players out there that could play for us? Absolutely, but we didn't get in. Um, I flew, uh, you know, I'm going to the this place and that place, and then after my first or second year, I'm like 95 is. 20 minutes that way and it goes all the way up to you know further than new york city and as far down as you want to go in florida so i'm a, i'm more so stayed on 95 uh my what second third and fourth year uh than uh than i did flying to texas driving to indiana or or uh, let's see where else did i drive driving to you know wherever so yeah, I, I finally figured out that 95 is 20 minutes that way. So I stayed on that uh, a pretty good bit. I've always thought that recruiters could do a great travel guide because you know where all the value stops. Not the best food, not quite the cheapest prices, but where the best value is, right? Yes, yes, yes. Me and Wawa became very <laughs> good friends uh, when I would go up to New Jersey. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um and don't don't ask us for the best hotels to stay in either, because you're you're finding the best deal, not necessarily the best place, but the best deal. Um, yeah, so yeah, we may not be great on hotel recommendations, especially with our recruiting budget, but uh, rental cars, uh, fast food stops, and Wawa. Yeah, we're pretty good at that. There you go. Uh, did you <laughs> find you started going back to the same high school program? to get players. Yeah, so it's more so the area than uh, the the program. So, you know, it, with with baseball it's a little different. So little story. So every baseball travel team, not every one of them, but a good amount come to play in Atlanta, Georgia for a week at a time. You know, a week at a time upcoming seniors play 
the next week upcoming juniors play, the next week upcoming sophomores play. So you kind of get an idea of, you know, where these kids are. Um, with North Carolina Central, we weren't very, you know, we weren't, we weren't ahead a lot so because our bread and butter were those guys that have gotten looked over. Um, so we'd watch them then, uh, you know, get a, get names for upcoming seniors or upcoming, you know, upcoming juniors. Okay, where are they playing this fall? Okay, they're playing in New Jersey or New Jersey for a week in, you know, October. Uh, you know, he's playing it, you know, these other ones are in, you know, South Florida. Okay, I'm going to go there for a week. And, you know, uh, while the junior college, you know, circuit is going on in Lakeland, I'm going to drive down to Fort Myers and watch this guy. And then I'm going to drive over to Miami and watch this guy. And then I'm going to, drive up to you know west palm and watch this guy then i'm gonna 12 hours home <laughs> uh in a nor so, in an average weekend for those rising senior rising junior tournaments how many games will you sit and watch um the atlanta and this is the worst um so they start at eight Jeez. um and it's in two hour eight a.m yep. uh and it's in two hour increments all the way until I think the last game starts at 8 p.m. <laughs> well, uh, in, in the, yeah, there's, there's, there are turf fields. Um, so if, um, if a game gets delayed, well, those games that were supposed to start at eight are now starting at 10 <laughs> or 12. I've been out there at 2 30 in the morning watching one of our players. Wow. Our crews. So, uh yeah, and then the next day, guess what? Starts again at eight a.m. So, yeah, that's but that's the worst. Atlanta's Atlanta's probably the worst. It's yeah, it's there's no there's no canceling. It's just delay. Yeah, and so when, those those summer storms are yeah yeah. When you go to a tournament like that, obviously you have a list of people of players you mm -hmm. know will be there, so you're checking in mm -hmm. on them. But mm -hmm. you're watching some guy come to the plate, and you've never heard mm -hmm. of him. You've never seen him. What kind of yep. things catch your eye to make you write a <clears throat> note down about a player? Yeah, I'll give you a story. So um, I had a break. Um, you know, when you're when there's a break, you don't leave. You just go find another game to watch. <laughs> so we had um, our pitching guy was from New Jersey. Uh, um, he's from Pennsylvania, but his parents now live in New Jersey. Stayed with them a lot uh, when I went up there. Um, so there was this team from Pennsylvania playing, and um, there's a pitcher on the mound. And you know, his first pitch was, you know, there's a velocity. You know, there's got to be a, a a minimum. You know, um, there's there's yeah, there has to be a minimum. So he was like 88, 89, 90, 91 the first inning, and I was looking, you know, doing some research whenever to dug out. Hey, is this kid? committed anywhere no 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 well they were playing this and it's always good to get the competition they were playing this team from georgia who had you know this guy going to vanderbilt this guy going to unc this guy going to this eight sec school this guy going to that acc school just loaded and he shut them down for five or six innings wow. um so I, I immediately after that game i said like, coach we gotta get this guy um so that was in what was that? that was in July before his senior year. He's from Pennsylvania. Um, let's see, in, at the middle of August, he's pitching again. Our head coach goes up to New Jersey to watch him, and his velo is not as good um, as it was. Breaking ball is still good, uh, but velo is not as good. I'm like, coach, they, he shut this team down for you know six innings. They had one run, three hits, he struck out eight. Blah blah blah. This you know. It, it really good breaking ball, really good fastball, um, and the coach, the, our head coach, was like, "Okay, you know, we'll 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 throw some money at him. He wants to be a freshman All American and the MEAC freshman of the year." So, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, uh, was dumb luck probably uh, that I was there, that he was pitching, and nobody else was watching the game because you know the other team, everybody was committed. Um, but yeah, we, yeah, we, we wound up on and then came to campus and he was a freshman all American. Nice. Well, you took full credit for that, right? Uh, absolutely not. No, no. Yeah. You can, 
you can write down what they throw velocity wise. You can write down what they, you know, how their breaking ball is, but you can't write down character, you know, right. yeah. you just, yeah, you're just hoping it hits. <laughs> but if you're the first <laughs> you know? one to see them, don't you get credit? Uh, I never, I have never take that credit. So no, you would, uh, no, you yeah, would. no, no, it's just the tough from Amish country in Pennsylvania. You know, it never got over, you know, 50 degrees when he, uh, when he pitched during his high school senior year so, or yeah. whenever he played baseball at all, you know, just in the mountains of Pennsylvania. And it's, uh, it doesn't get really hot up there. So, you know, it got a little hot down here. He started hitting 93, 94. Okay. So, yeah. Right. We'll go. He's a pretty good player for us. Uh, one of my other favorite questions to ask people that are from a small town, which I'm not from. So I'm just, I love small town stories. And mm-hmm. you are from Madison, Mississippi. Uh, mm-hmm. to, as of to, as of yesterday, the population was around twenty seven thousand. I don't think it was that big wow. when you were there. Correct? <laughs> no, sir. Okay. Uh, how many no. how many stoplights? Well, it, Madison's kind of a you know it's kind of growing, so it's a suburb of Jackson. Uh, so there's more than you think. Um, so, you know, it's not a, you know, stoplight and a post office and a gas station. And then that's it. Now, where I played junior college baseball, that's exactly what it was. Uh, we didn't even have a McDonald's in the town. Ooh. That tells you where far, where, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a stoplight, a gas station, um, and a post office was there and the, the junior college was there. So yeah, I've, I've been and lived in those. I think the population was about. Well, during non-hunting season, there was probably a thousand. And during hunting season, it you know probably grew by five thousand. So, uh, <laughs> what town was that? Uh, it's called Moorhead, Mississippi. What yeah. junior college was it? Mississippi Delta Community College. Oh, I got that it's right here. Of, okay. Yeah, it's All in the right. middle of Greenwood, Mississippi, and Greenville, Mississippi. Gotcha. All in right. the middle of absolute nowhere. Yep. I loved it. All right. Uh, you got only, uh, the only thing to focus on was baseball, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Uh, all right. It's so no, in, in, yeah. in Madison, uh, mm-hmm. was it small enough where when you did something you probably weren't supposed to do, or you were somewhere you weren't supposed to be, did it take long for news to get back to your house before you got home? No, 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 no. That's small town. Yeah. Okay. Small town talk that travels fast, Yeah, faster than Twitter. Yep. Uh, yeah, that yep. travels fast. Yes, sir. So Madison at the time when I grew up, I went to the private school. There was a public school there, and they were the highest classifications in Mississippi. And now there is a um, there's another public school that's ten minutes away. It's also a highest the highest classification in Mississippi. So wow. it's not, you know, it's 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 small uh, compared to Raleigh, mm-hmm. uh, but it's you know, it's not it's not too small. Um, but yes, word travels fast. Yes, sir. Uh, do you have a story to share with us about the news that beat you home and you had to decide, do they know it yet by the question they asked me? Oof. Um, you just want one story? Uh, uh well, <laughs> we'll, we'll start with one, whichever one you uh, want to uh, share. It was, it, was, it was usually high school parties. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was usually the, uh, you know, coming back at, 12 o'clock, uh, you know, or curfew, whenever that was, um, you know, had to inform my parents of where I'd been. And, uh, yeah, I would mention that they were like, yeah, we knew, um, you know, that, you know, so-and-so was having a party and just, you know, curious if you would, uh, if you would tell us the truth. So, uh, yeah, it was more so of, uh, uh, high school, uh, get togethers, uh, on Friday and Friday nights, especially after football games on Friday nights. Oh, yeah. Uh, then you got good training from your parents on how to phrase questions to Grace when she, your daughter, when she comes home, when she's older, old enough to oh. go out. You learn how to phrase those questions to see, are they going to lie to me or are they going to fall on their sword? <laughs> so, yeah. That's right. That's right. I don't know. <laughs> She'd probably be a pretty good agent. So, uh, uh, the, yeah. yeah, you know, daddy's heart. It has been stolen. So yes. um, I'm not, I'm not, 
uh, there might be a little uh, a lead way. Uh, yeah, I may eat what's come, what I gave to my parents. Uh, yeah. They said what goes around comes around. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I got it coming. Yeah. Have uh, you and you have an older bro you have a brother. Mm -hmm. Right. Younger okay. brother, five right. years younger. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, does he have any kids yet? He has two boys. Okay. Uh, Hayes is three. Uh, it'll be four in June, the end of June. And Chase is, oh, he was born in January, so he is five months. Cool. So, yeah, he has two boys. All right. Uh, have you had a discussion about the first time a car date comes to pick up Grace and the cool dad lines you're going to throw out to that kid to scare the daylights out of him? Oh, no. Uh, so me and my brother, so my first word was ball, and we just played sports my whole life. So our conversations are, you know, how's, you know, is Hayes going to be left-handed? Is he going to be right-handed? Is Grace going to be right-handed? Is he going to be left-handed? You know, if Hayes is left-handed, he can't play the infield. He can only play the outfield and first base and pitch, but he could pitch as a left-hander. No, those are our conversations. It's never a, you know, a picking up a car date. It's always sports. Always sports. <laughs> then her first car date better be a baseball player, right? That's right. That's right. I will have uh yeah, I will have pulled his driver's license uh before he comes in and picks my child up. So yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot about that. You yeah, can do that, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. I can do a lot of background check. Yeah. A lot of background check. Son, yeah, have a seat. A I whole yeah. lot of yep. Son, have yeah, a seat. I got a, a question for you. Media out there too. Yep. That's right. There's a lot of social media out there too, Mike. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know what? <laughs> and here's a whole nother podcast. People, yeah. they post their whole lives on Facebook and they end up putting themselves in, in the corner when they have to answer something or defend something. It's like, but I just right. saw it on your Facebook page. I know you weren't right. sick. Mike. You were at a party. You were at a Kentucky yeah. Derby party. I know you weren't sick. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I am so glad that I did not have social media when I was growing up. Yep. And I'm sure you did too back in the forties, but, uh, that's yeah. it. Yep. Uh, yep. so, <laughs> so glad I didn't have social media because I would probably be, uh, yeah, not good. Yep. Well, we're just happy Al Gore had not invented the internet in the forties back when I was growing <laughs> up. So that did help. Uh, so you ended up getting your, uh, bachelor's degree from Delta state. All right. Yeah. So here's my connection to that school in a weird way. Um, as a Tennessee Lady Balls fan, basketball mainly, uh, Delta State in the mid 70s was the powerhouse school in a teeny mm -hmm. tiny little town in Mississippi. They won three national championships and they were beating everybody. That's right. That's right. Uh, Tough people. Yep. Yeah. Um, was that what got you interested in the school or was that why Delta State over the others and were there other choices? Um, no, there were not other choices. Um, so I was <laughs> so uh, where I went to junior college was about 30 minutes from where Delta State is. Delta State's in Cleveland, Mississippi, um, which is also in the Delta. Um, it's a town, it's a it's a little bit bigger town. Um the population of Delta State at the time when I went was not as big as some junior college populations, uh, but um, they had a really good teaching, uh, a really good education school. Um, the head coach was, I mean, uh, wow. awesome. Um, hard nose, <laughs> hard nose. Uh, but uh, it was somewhere where I wanted to go, even if baseball did not work out. Um, that's where I wanted to go to finish my, uh, undergrad degree. Yeah. And he, Margaret Wade was the women's coach back then. And here's how good she was. The, uh, premier women's college basketball player every year gets awarded the Wade trophy. You know, wow. you're good when they name a trophy after you, that's the <laughs> that's impact right. you had on a sport. That's right. Uh, so what was the best thing about going to Madison Ridgeland Academy for high school? Um, first, uh, we talked about Jesus openly. So, uh, you know, it was, it was a Christian school, it was a private school. Uh, so, you know, you were taught uh, Christian values from day one. So that was probably the best. 
Uh, second best, I played everything that I could think of in, until they started overlapping with each other. Um, so I played, let's see, in eighth grade, it was football, baseball, soccer, basketball, track, all of it. Um, in ninth grade, I wanted to uh, start focusing on three, so I cut out soccer and track and just did baseball, basketball, and football. Then in 10th grade, uh, I did baseball and football. Ball. Um, one didn't want to play basketball anymore because uh, it tied into baseball season. So I was done with basketball. Um, and then in my senior year, I did track so I could get out of school uh, through the shot put. Uh, yeah, but was inter not interested in attending uh, school anymore. So uh, anytime, you know, track let out at 9 a.m. for a, uh, a track meet. Yeah, I was uh, would throw a couple of shot puts, not place and you know, then go to baseball practice. Be the happiest kid that day, weren't you? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, right. So baseball has always been your true love. Oh, yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, what else could you gone have gone to a junior college to play of all the other sports you played? Uh, well, football, the big man sport. So I couldn't have done it. Uh, and, and I'm slow. So I, I couldn't have done that. Um, golf, uh, I'm still not very good at golf, so couldn't have done that. Um, basketball, uh, too short, so couldn't have done that. Uh, I think I, <laughs> you know, I, I think I limited myself to one sport, and that was probably about it. So you hit your one and done, right? I hit my one and done. Tennis, I mean, there's a little bit of tennis legacy, I guess, in my family. Uh, but, uh, you know, in tennis, you have to hit it over the net. You know, if you hit it over the fence, yeah. it doesn't yeah. count. You know, that, it's not a home run. That, so that, I wasn't interested yeah. in that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but my grandmother's in the Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame as a uh, tennis player. Oh, cool. Yeah. Where did she play? Um, she played uh, She played all the way up until she was like 75. Uh, and she could beat the – she would, she would be uh, – She'd be 68, I'd be 13, and she'd beat me, you know, 6 0 6 0. Uh, it was like it wasn't even a question. Like I could never beat her. Uh, but she played at the University of Mississippi for women. Um, so yeah, she played there and then she continued to play. Uh, she was never, she never played, you know, professionally or anything like that, but she would play you know, on the side and, and, and beat everybody. Uh, and yeah, as a 13 year old, I realized that this 68 year old grandma is a lot better than I am. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that ended your tennis career, right? <laughs> that ended my tennis career. All Me right. and my brother, let's see, I was 13. He was, he was five years younger. So he was eight at the time we would play doubles against her and she'd still beat us. Yeah. Um, uh, so, cause she got, she had a bigger court to work with and we had a small one and, yeah, she was yeah. quick. She'd run us to death. Yeah. All right. So Mississippi Delta Community College is where you played baseball. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your last at bat? Oof, my last at bat. Um, sophomore year. Who were we playing? Um, I think I got out. Um. <laughs> <laughs> who did you play that game oh let's see man was your team any good we'll go with that okay okay all right so my freshman year um <laughs> speaking of uh yeah we we were okay we made it into the conference tournament but um we made a run in the conference tournament end up losing in the finals but what well, we made a we made a huge run against the team with a lot of division one baseball players um yeah i mean i could go on for about 30 minutes to yeah. tell you the stories but yeah we were down 11 to 1 at uh you know the second game of the day at midnight um i remember the announcer on the uh on the, the PA announcer, he said, you know, happy Mother's Day. It's 1201 and we're still in the seventh inning. Um, yeah, we were making a comeback. It was fun. Yeah, I, I remember that game like it was yesterday. Okay. Uh, but okay. yeah, so my freshman year, we were my sophomore year. Uh, we changed. Uh, we had a lot of new players come in. 
um, didn't gel really well. A lot of more talented players. Um, so yeah, we were we were just okay. We had changed divisions. We, I think we went from Division One to Division Two, uh, or vice versa. Uh, harder to get in the conference tournament. Didn't gel very well. Um, but yeah, so freshman year. All right. Something you always yeah. remember, right? You can brag to Grace about always. that in my day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, real quick before we go, we've been putting Neil's uh, phone number on the screen during the show. So, please give him a call, even if it's just to ask a couple questions. So, when the show is over and people have time to think about their policy, what's the first thing when they pull up their policy or pull it out that they should look for? Liability limits. Always liability limits. A lot of people get minimum state limits, which is 30000 per incident, 60000 per accident, and $25,000 worth of property damage. There's a lot of vehicles out there that are worth more than $25,000. Um, so if you you hit one, um, uh, a, a vehicle that's over $25,000, you total it, and the total is you know $50,000, $25,000 is coming out of your pocket. So right, right. Um, I would definitely look at liability limits. That's the biggest thing. I like Liability, it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, folks. And that's why you should call a local agent because they will give you tips like that. Uh, Neil, love the show today. You know, you and I have talked baseball. We'll probably talk more baseball. Uh, love the stories, but I know you enjoy helping folks. So uh, keep up the good work on that. And uh, with Carpex, I know we'll see each other at the social tonight. Will you be there? Yes, sir. All right. I will see you then, but uh, uh, enjoy the show today. And folks, take a look. Please take a look at your coverage. You may think you're good, but like Neil said, you hit the wrong car, and all of a sudden you're paying out of pocket for a long, long time sometimes. Mm -hmm. So uh, appreciate the tips on that, Neil. Uh, good luck with uh, insurance. And five-year-old Grace and T-Ball, glad you're not strategizing yet on that, but I know <laughs> that day will come, won't it? That's right. Yeah, That's right. So, yes, it will. Yeah. Yes, it will. Uh, so anyways, enjoy the show. We will see everybody next time on Triangle B&I. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.